Hello, this is Marshall from Scree LLC. I'm a maker that's been making PCBs and dactyl manuforms of many weird shapes and designs for now a year. I originally started out with a very terrible prototype one of a flexible PCB design that uses hot swap about a year ago. I've been improving them over time, and so what I'd like to introduce is what I believe a close to final design. There might be small improvements, but I believe this is where we're at. So what this design does is it allows for near zero or zero soldering. The reason why I say near zero is because while a sheet comes with six rows, it doesn't have to be. You can cut at any of the junction locations to shorten a column. Let's say you want this one to be five. You can cut here. As long as you pin it out correctly in your software, it'll work functionally fine. But when you cut here, your data out pin from here is eventually supposed to go to the next column. So you have to solder specifically the little data out jumper, or if we're cutting up one from up here, a data in jumper. When we solder these together, all you're doing is bridging the correct data pin to the data in or data out for the LEDs. If you're not using LEDs, there's literally no soldering with this design. This design uses what I call a scree tail. We'll zoom in. The scree tail is a polyamide custom made FPC cable with proper curving on all of my angles to ensure there's zero, well, near zero chance of ripping. I'm sure you can, but this stuff is actually quite robust and I think it'd more likely cut you than it would rip. You'll also notice that my via holes are staggered in ways to minimize the chance of a via tear starting. And moreover, I also have little solder jumper pads. So if you don't want to have this many columns, you can just solder to terminate the data in or data in and out pins specifically for that column. What's nice about this system is when your LEDs, which start here, go all the way down and say end here, the LED data chain continues on right back up to the microcontroller and onto the next for your thumbs or the next LEDs. Along with this design, I came out with a Scree translator. Now, I don't have any three pin JST SH headers, but they're in the mail. But what this gives you is the option to do through hole connectors for columns one through seven, rows one through seven, as well as a thumb row, or rows one through six and thumb row. And then VCC, ground and LED. And what this translates from is whatever microcontroller you're using, be it an Elite C or a Raspberry Pi, or some new device to the scree tail. This means these flexible PCBs have no limitations on what microcontroller you use. They have two outboard connections, which is your scree tail, which simply plugs into this design here, Oop. which plugs in very simply, goes in, sockets down, and then it's in actually quite robustly. As well as a tow beans. What this tow beans connection does is it is a standard 0.5 millimeter pitch uh, FPC cable that'll go to my single key PCB design called tow beans. Tow beans provides support for chalk, MX, as well as EC11 hot swap. They, from there, there's two different designs. I have one that's hand solderable, where you'll use standard wires, or another one where you can use FPC cables to go from one tow bean to the next to the next. That method allows for 
entirely simple single key PCB connections with zero soldering and no need for a complicated FPC cable that also carries your toe connect or your your thumb cluster connections meaning this is far cheaper and if there is the chance of a rip it's a lot easier to replace as well as giving you more flexible room for positioning I know with some trackball designs you'll find that you need a lot of room to get to specific keys for your thumb clusters because my toe beans utilize either hand wiring or FPC cables of a variety of lengths you can get the connections wherever you need them without needing to use a soldering iron and considerably faster so these connect with these 0.3 millimeter pitch connectors they're very simple they just pop up and they pop out the brown is a polyamide stiffener and then the orange yellow color is standard polyamide like your your tape that you'll use for protecting batteries and such this is incredibly high temperature resistant so if you are doing soldering elsewhere on the board you don't have to worry about this melting and ruining traces whereas with standard FPC connections you can end up having issues with that everything is relatively hot swap in that this column doesn't have to be this column it could be this one I order them currently in four column sheets but I can order them in larger or smaller sheets if you're wanting LEDs I have them in LEDs because I hand populate this with a pick and place machine if you want four column three column three column five column and you message me I will at no extra cost and no material waste moreover populate it specifically for that they connect via my scree pad or XAIO flex this is currently an XAIO flex it has a bit of a uh, soldering issue this is an older design and I haven't put together the newest PCB that's come in so it is currently connected to a secondary unit for power delivery I figured I'd show a demonstration on how this connects though so I set this to the side up here Whoop, well not too far this is a, how simple it is to wire LEDs and a s entire finger matrix for a keyboard done these three will light up as soon as I provide USB power Ooh. simple they all work I don't have RGB effects right now set up but on this one isn't missing it's just not there that's to show you that the data in connection works this is the first in the the column set actually you think it's the last in the column set but oh here I'll show you that it works nice thing about these is everything seems to just work connection and then power it on and see that one's out but that one's on this means for QMA QMK builds you have complete per key RGB without any of the fiddling of soldering these and putting on capacitors in that these have proper um, they have proper resistors so that each column is receiving the correct voltage that there's no uh, chain connection issues as well as capacitors to ensure that the LEDs are properly powered and I think I've already mentioned it but the scree tail comes in two variants there is the 6p variant and there's also a 7 uh, column variant but at any time they can be cut to shorten the minimum scree tail length is three though technically if you don't mind bodging an LED you can do 
one if you really wanted to. Looking over at a XAIO flex, well, hold on, I'm gonna get a better. Okay, so let's take a look at the microcontroller boards. This just came in, so I haven't had a chance to solder it. On it, we have a polyfuse. We have proper voltage shifting for five volt LED powering or 3.3 volt. If you don't want the three point, or if you don't want the five volt, let me know and I won't populate it. It'll save you some battery life as a inactive voltage level shifter still draws a small amount of current. It provides column connections and row connections all broken out via JST SH if you don't want to use the scree tail system. It has a XAIO flex adapter which will pull the sense pins off of the seed XAIO that boosts the total pin count on these all the way up to 16. It has a status LED here, the thumbs and uh, scree tail. And then I also have a breakout board for either a trackball or an OLED setup. How this works is we have 3.3 volts and ground, and then we have two, three, four, four data pins. Now, the XAIO, from seed only has two high speed pins. So what I've done is I've set the clock and the, I believe it's the MISO connection as the high speed connections. And then if you're doing a three wire uh, I2C or SPI connection, you just ignore one of them, either 0.02 or 0.16, or this'll do even four where you have the extra pin reset, and then power switch on the back. Also, while I have battery terminals that you can hand solder to, this also supports a LIR2450 uh, rechargeable battery, which is about the largest rechargeable battery that you can buy that's a pin cell battery. Um, I think I already mentioned it has low voltage and high voltage cutoff. While the Seed XAIO has a battery charger in it, it does not contain proper low voltage or high voltage um, battery cutoff. So if you were to drain a battery using one of these microcontrollers, you could have the potential to harm the battery. Whereas with my design, once it reaches 3.3 volts, the battery connection is severed and then you just recharge it. So we have the XAIO Flex, as well as soon to come out a Scree pad, which will be a module design using the MOCO MK08A that will provide, I believe it's up to 32 pins for a whole variety of connections, as well as an expanded uh, memory chip uh, a QSPI memory chip that provides up to, I believe, I got 16 megabyte chips, but I think you can go even farther than that. Then we have the Scree Translator. So if you want to use my Scree Tails on whatever design you have, without needing to mess with anything, you simply take this, it'll cost about a dollar, little board, and you can either wire up with GST-SH connectors or you can just solder in and then bam, you can unplug and replug in your key matrix. And then finally, I have a design for the Raspberry Pi Pico that I've worked in conjunction with Wilder Builds that provides connections for the thumbs, connections for my toe beans, the scree tail, LED out, um, uh, a SPI or I2C connection, columns, rows. If you wanted to do your um, QMK TRRX connector, this has a JST-SH header that you can solder to it. Or, moreover, 
On this side, this is a USB-C header, and I'll show you a build shortly that utilizes this the design. This lets you have your microcontroller on here, your Raspberry Pi Pico, as well as the USB-C right underneath it. So this is one of my more latest builds where I built a trackball QMK design board utilizing the scree tail system as well as the Raspberry Pi Pico breakout board. Okay, in this design, you will see that I have my USB-C connection for my uh, connection between my two halves in a split QMK board, as well as the USB micro from the Raspberry Pi Pico. On this side, you'll see that I have the scree tail connecting to each connection. I have three columns. I have four size columns. I have a trackball that connects to the SPI or I2C connection here. And then I have the scree tail that goes in and under and carries all the way over. And then I have a thumbs connection. What this thumbs connection is, is my toe beans. And here you're seeing the toe beans that are connected via um, FPC cables. I have um, polyamide, small 30 millimeter length polyamide connections coming that will actually directly solder to the board that I can populate for you if you don't want to solder them. What that'll do is give you a much more rigid connection, so you're not even needing to work with trying to unplug or plug these in. Instead, it just has the toe beans connected. This design worked incredibly well. And here I will show you that everything works. Oh, that's not. Ooh, there we go. Takes a minute for the other half to boot up. I don't know if you can see under, oh yeah, you can sort of see under the lights. You can't see my mouse, but my uh, mouse key layer, auto mouse key layer lights up. It causes my single, or my indicator LEDs for layer status as well as mouse key layer status to light up. So the RGB effects work, the matrixes work, it's literally RGB plug and play in a matter of hours instead of tens of hours. Along with the scree tail system, I've been slowly trying to come up with a proper tenting device as well as wrist rests. So allow me to introduce what is my current tenting device. What this device does is it utilizes magnets this is the bottom to the one uh, to the trackball keyboard to stick to it and then you can tilt and adjust to whatever tent and it, it's hard to tell with uh, the camera being straight down but you can adjust the keyboard to whatever tent position including extremely high tenting positions using the magnets this connection uses, or this device uses rubber stoppers, or uh, anti-slip stoppers to allow for rigid placement. So it actually sticks pretty well. And because the side of the keyboard can rest against the table, it's extremely rigid. Furthermore, the tightness can be adjusted just with these Phillips head connectors. So if you want to loosen it up to get it into the position you want, you can loosen it up, get it where you want, and then tighten it down. For palm rests, I have the standard, I know, it's it's the standard kidney bean. But I've done a few things. Firstly, this kidney bean doesn't come out. It is encapsulated in the 3D print. Secondly, it's a memory foam one. So you're not going to have those issues of and I know that it's rare, but I've heard some horror stories that the silicone ones that are gel filled, if they pop, they're a sticky, smelly mess. The memory foam doesn't have any of that. 
while it's not necessarily super cool, it is soft and supportive, and the fabric has a nice touch to it. These I will design for no extra cost, tilt and height. So if you have a STL or model of your keyboard, I will gladly model the expected height and tilt to match the curvature or the tent of your keyboard. Next, I also have these. Now these are specific left and right. Here, here's a set, although I, I don't have the, the little rubber stoppers on this one. These come in a variety of designs in that I can, again, change the height and I can change the tilt. These are modeled off of the wrist rest design that you'll find on the Kinesis Advantage 2 with the curve matching the height to the home row on the, the curved key wells. These feel incredibly comfortable and the nice thing is you can adjust their positioning from the keyboard so you get them where it's comfortable for you. Lastly, they come with a variety of materials. This here is a custom die cut neoprene four millimeter thick um, mouse pad. I find this actually the most comfortable because it's got a nice amount of squish with a good texture, but also I can do Horween Cavalier leather. I can die punch these instead of hand trace cut. And what this pull up leather exhibits a beautiful characteristic. The waxes in it will actually cause pull up lines and they look gorgeous. So hopefully some of those things are interesting to you. If you have any suggestions, requests, design ideas, gladly shoot them towards me. My goal is to eventually roll all these out as open source. Some of it's going to take me a lot longer than others as I'm completely terrible at writing up readmes and guides on how some of this stuff functions. And I don't really want to just spew undocumented mess all over uh, GitHub in the community. Um, I currently very quickly can release the Scree translator. I can release the newest update to the toe beans as well as hopefully the Raspberry Pi, uh, the, the Pico breakout board, the XAO Flex, as well as the Scree tail. Well, actually I could probably release the Scree tail reasonably quick. Although ordering FPC cables not in bulk is incredibly non-economic. Um, I don't know when I'll get around to fully documenting the um, flexible PCBs, but those are plans to be released. Um, I'm hoping to get some of my models out there too. Hopefully this wasn't terribly too long-winded. I've never really had the chance to sit in front of a camera. Well, in this case, next to a camera and microphone and talk to everyone and show off some of the cool things I've done, but hopefully some of this is interesting and I appreciate the time and effort everyone does for this community. You all are a wonderful bunch of people. Toodaloo.